coming up on show 526, Saturday special interview. Well, with two people, actually. The new Renault Zoe ZE50 is discussed. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to the show, EV News Daily, Saturday 13th of July today. My name is Martin Lee and I try and get you people at the weekends for the interview shows in and around the EV community. And today, two for the price of one, two experts on Europe's best-selling EV. Well, until uh, actually it has been recently, not Europe's best-selling EV of all time, but uh, in recent months it has been the best-selling. And they've just announced a brand new one, and I'm slightly biased because it is the car that I drive. So they have released the third iteration of it, if you like, of the Renault Zoe, or Renault, I suppose you could say it that way. Uh, I have the 22 kilowatt hour, there's a 40, and soon there'll be a 50. Well, 52 kilowatt hour. They're doing themselves down, actually, by calling it the 50. A really important city car in Europe. So even if you are listening to this podcast from somewhere in the world that you can't actually buy this car, I think a lot of people will still be interested in the general specs and the kind of things that other people can buy in other countries, much like I can't buy the Chevy Bolt, would love to. This is going to be a fascinating chat today. Hey, by the way, thank you to a brand new executive producer of the show. He upped his support. Now an exec producer, Ian Griff Griffiths, has a ZE40, used it for his commute from North Lincolnshire to London. He also had an Outlander, which is the plug-in hybrid one, and he recently sold it to William. Now, William runs V0 on the website. is v0.co.uk, and Ian says any chance of giving him a, uh, his small but growing business a shout-out on your podcast. And also, Ian says he is a waiting his Tesla Model 3 long range in blue with a tow bar and I bet he can't wait to get that it's a fantastic spec car that one gorgeous color so we're going to talk today about the brand new Renault Zoe ZE50 recently unveiled at a, a media event or kind of an unveiling event a couple of Mondays ago and one of my guests was there we'll get on to him in a moment my first guest though is Will Adams now Will Adams works at a car dealership they're called DSG in Morecambe in the north of the country and he I you know I've said on this podcast before car dealers are not my favorite breed of people I mean they're not up there with the estate agents <laughs> i joke estate agents you must admit there's there's a few rotten apples uh, but generally generally uh, uh, car dealers are not my my favorite thing i find the whole car buying experience a, a little bit too confrontational gladiator gladiatorial you know oh mate i'll give you give you some free car mats if you get it buy it now today only gotta buy it today too much high pressure selling for me however there is one car dealer who I would recommend, and that's Will, and that's DSG. And that's because whenever I'm in the communities like the forums, the Speak EV forum on Twitter, in this country, a lot of the places that EV people go, not to buy a car, but to to talk, he's always in there giving advice for free. And he goes under the name Badger in Black. So he's not out there doing sales pitches, adding to the community. That's the kind of person that I want to buy a car from. Someone who, in his free time, spends all of that trying to help other people with wanting nothing in return and giving up 20 minutes to be on the podcast today. Uh, so Will's on the show. The other person is Craig Tong. He is the founder and the main man behind the Renault Zoe Owners Club and really the Renault ZE Owners Club here in Europe. They just had their fourth birthday. Yesterday it was, actually. And so congratulations to anyone, everyone involved in that. If you went along to the event, I hope you had a good time. And Craig, is it right? So first of all, welcome to the podcast. Craig, welcome back to the podcast actually a, a glutton for punishment a, re, a repeat visitor it is absolutely and i'm glad to be back on again martin i think we're uh, making this a bit of a regular thing <laughs> yeah no problem no we love having you on and for the first time uh, breaking his podcast duck is will from dsg who long time listeners will have heard me talk about will from dsg uh, but why don't you give us the quick intro will so you you sell Renault zoe's for a living we do i mean we're just a, a family run business up in based up morecambe and barrow way and we we just kind of started specializing in electric vehicles back in 2015 and the zoe's took off in your illustrious history you've even been crowned dealer of the year yes we got we got that i think it's four years running with Renault for... <laughs> oh, I thought you just got it once. You <laughs> four years in a row. <laughs> wow, that's cool. And Craig, uh, this is where the whole thing comes full circle. You got your most recent ZE40 from Will. 
I did, yes. Um, I, I, I did a uh, special, wonderful trip up to see Will and uh, collected it. It's, it's been absolutely amazing. But as you're all about to find out, can't wait to get my new one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, so, yeah, so this is interesting. So I, when we came up to Fully Charged Live and the Renault Zoe Owners Club were joining in and doing the electric taxi, the shuttle service, I came up from the south coast. What's that? 120 miles. I did that in my 22 kilowatt hour zoe i stopped twice because i needed to arrive there with some charge now and then on your most recent trip craig to europe you said the the your car you now charge at half the speed but because yes. the battery is twice the size you said that makes actually a real difference to you know only stopping once was the the big the big difference right yeah absolutely i mean the other week i went to uh, paris and had to go to heathrow airport where Originally, if I drove to Heathrow Airport, which is about 96 miles from my house, I would have probably had to stop once on the way down to get a charge, and then probably halfway up again to get a top up on the way back. When on the way back, I actually went to Heathrow and back without stopping. So oh, you did the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> oh, that, that saved me 45 minutes worth of waiting about. So yeah, I mean, if I was to do a longer journey, then it's going to take longer because you've got you've got to stop, haven't you? But for them shorter journeys, it makes it quicker. And I'd say shorter journeys, 180 something mile round trip. Wow! Yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. only when you get into the really long journeys that the charging speed matters. Yeah, exactly. And, and, EVs. and how often do actually people travel 200 miles a day? So, Will, in terms of the before we get onto the new Zoe, the current balance of ones that you sell, because you sell more Zoes than, than anybody else. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but let's let's just say it. Uh, and uh, uh, so, we, what, we've what done a, about 20 percent of the Zoes in the UK this year. All right. Okay. So you still more Zoe's than anyone else. <laughs> what's the um, what's the balance of what cars people are buying? New cars uh, and used cars as well. Between um, between the R110 and the Q90. Yeah. Nearly all R110. There's hardly really? any of the. I mean, they stopped doing the Q90. Yeah. But there was still some around. But even before then, the amount of Q90s we did were insignificant on the Z40. Because for a lot of use cases, you didn't need it. So slower charging, but bigger battery. People go for the ZE40 now. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, simply because you've, you've got your 180 miles when you get there. Even if you're, I mean, I live up in Barrow in Furness. I've got 300 miles to get to London. Even in an R110, I'm only stopping for a bit on route that I've stopped for anyway. Because you stop for 30 to 45 minutes anyway. And that would probably get you there all the way. So you're not actually gaining anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that brings us nicely on to... The new one, which we now know is just called Renault Zoe, uh, after all the rumours. <laughs> so let, let, let's uh, let's get so to, let's get the story then, Craig, because when we met you at Fully Charged Live, you were under uh, your your secret was under lock and key. You couldn't tell us anything. So now it's all over. What was it like? You flew to Paris. You saw the car before anybody else in the world. How how was it? How was the trip? Do you know what? I, I, it was the first experience I've ever felt of doing anything like this. Never never been on a trip where someone's going to show me a car reveal in front of only the press sort of style. Uh, treated absolutely amazing by Renault. Couldn't thank him enough. But the to actually stand there and see the, the covers being pulled off something that only probably, I would say, 20 people in the UK are getting to see, it was pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wanted to run up and start touching it, and but I had to hold, hold myself back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was it was absolutely amazing. It really was. Um, I, even when it sat there with the covers on, I had I, I felt goosebumps because I could see the difference already, even with the covers with the lines over the you know, and I could just see they going, ah, oh, it's so different. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it was amazing. And it really absolutely was absolutely amazing. It really was top secret as well. I mean, it really was top secret. It was absolutely yeah. No one, um, no one knew. Even Will didn't even know uh, what it was going to look like or anything. No, uh, they no really we didn't did even know the name wasn't Neo. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Which was quite funny actually, because because going up to it, myself and a few others were talking, and Will was saying, "Oh yeah, the new Neo," and I knew it wasn't going to be called Neo, and I couldn't oh, say anything. No. Oh no! <laughs> but Nick was telling everybody it was Neo, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh dear!" But um, yeah, it was it, it was. You know, just actually talking about it all and not being able to say anything is was hard. It really was hard. People, people were like, "Oh, so what? Are you what are you going away for now? Or why? Why?" I actually told a lot of people I knew I was going to Disneyland in Paris. Okay, <laughs> okay. just because it was easier. Kind of easier to lie. Yeah, it was so, not to Disney World for the day. 
Yeah. Yeah. Without the family. Wow. Without the family. Without yeah, no one noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Just a single single man going to <laughs> Disney. Okay, let's let's move oh. on from that. Now, um okay, so we had you had the reveal. If you haven't if people are listening to this and they haven't watched it yet, you made a fantastic video when you were there. And that you know, the interesting uh the interesting thing was um lots of lots of people yeah, well, actually, the car reviewers go from the full spectrum of, you know, fossil fuel magazines that are starting to cover EVs now through to fully charged, which not they're talking about you. So you were able to ask questions that other people wouldn't like things like the app, which, you know, love my car, but it's not even an app, really. It's just a bad way of accessing the Internet. So you're able to ask those questions. Yeah, I managed to actually get involved with uh, people behind the scene, which was great. Whereas a lot of the the press were just more interested in quick answers, getting a bit of information to write down to put in the in, into their magazine or online. Whereas I actually managed to get hold of uh, uh, three of the people there and start asking real deep questions about you know the charging speeds, the, what the battery is, um, all the interior, what it can do, all the sensors, and the application and and the app honestly that that part of the app even the guy that was showing on the app if you watch the video was so excited to show yeah. me <laughs> yeah yeah it, uh, it, it, yeah it looks as good as 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 good as any other app I've used for an EV yeah and and to be honest there's one part of the video that I never actually wasn't filming and it's actually backwards compatible with the old Zoe apart from you can't do uh, the map transfer from your phone but you'll be able to use it on the older Zoe so all the older Zoe's are going to get this as well so it's going to be pretty pretty impressive. Did I hear in your video? I watched it, but he sort of not stumbled over it. But when I think he did, he actually say it's on the four G network. Did you? Catch it that is. Bit? So all the, so all right. the new all the new Zoe's are going to be four G with over the air updates. So no more taking your SD card out to to do an update. Oh right. So when it's, it's, will... I'm I'm gonna I'm now calling this a baby Tesla because if you look at the screen <laughs> on the dash. Mm. And you, it is, and it, yes, it, it has got a nineteen. Tesla. It is a baby Tesla inside. It really is. <laughs> it is. Now, Will clearly, you know, Will, your your, uh, you know, Craig runs the club, and that's his. No, that's his passion. But this is your livelihood. So yeah, you. But you really had no tip offs in terms of like it wasn't nudge nudge wink wink. Don't tell anyone. Like everybody in your industry, you still have to wait. You know, you don't get told three months ago. Well, I've had a subscription to Auto Express for the last 10 years because we don't get told stuff. Wow, Normally the, okay. it comes out in the press before we get told. Okay, so it's not now, like the car, car dealers are, are sort of privy to stuff and, and, you know, playing dumb, so... Yeah, no, we... The, I mean, you know people in Renault and you hear rumours and stuff, but they can't say anything official because as soon as you tell dealers, dealers tell everyone. When... Uh, okay, so when... We'll come on to the specs in just a second because I'm, I'm a bit of a stats nerd, but, but when people start asking about the car what do you tell them but like, you know over the last the, few months over the last few months it is, is literally we don't know much at the moment and we can start all we can do is talk about the rumors that we've heard so we were pretty sure it's going to be a 50 kilowatt hour battery that had been a, around for a bit and we were pretty sure it's going to have ccs so you were just leading people down that line and we knew we'd be able to go hopefully around 230 to 240 miles there was a few leaks when there. there was we, we heard yeah. that it was going to be 22 kilowatt people were saying it's going to be 100 kilowatt but we were sort of like on the lines of we know it, it's not because of the size of the battery um one thing that one of our members went down to their local dealer the day that the video was released and at the Renault dealership <laughs> and says i want to order one of these um it was uh, a friend our friend lind one of our admins because i want to order one of these and he went, uh, well, what? The new Zoe? I don't know what you're on about. Knew nothing about it. Oh, so he no. had to show him the video. <laughs> he said, well, it's out. Everyone else knows about it. So and wow. that's how, right even up to the up to Monday, that's how quiet it was, as Will would say. Dealers didn't know. Well, to be honest, unless the dealers signed up for the press alerts, they still don't know. Let's talk about the specs and let's talk about things like that, the things that we knew that were coming. So again, any of my US listeners, you won't get this car, but this is going to be a massive car. It's the best-selling car in... Uh, in France, it's one of the best-selling cars in Europe. It's a city car, and it now comes with the 52 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery, which is not far off, which is bigger than the standard range Model 3, but you can't buy a standard range Model 3. But it's not far off a standard range plus Model 3, um, which, of course, is a very efficient car. In terms of mileage, 230... Is it 232? 242. Yeah, oh, 242. 
Okay, two four two is a WLTP. Uh, that's on miles, about three hundred and ninety uh, kilometers. And well, the big thing is you can now spec it in two ways. So a bit of additional choice here. You can have the bigger battery with the choice of either the existing motor, which works fine, or the new and improved bigger motor. So what do you reckon, Will? You're going to sell a, a load of these. What do you reckon people are going to go for? Well, I think the bigger motor might only be available on the very top spec one. Because I think this time we're going to see three different specs on the Zoe. Instead of just a dynamic nav and a signature, I think it's going to mirror the rest of the range and you'll probably get a Play, an Iconic and a GT line. And I think the GT line have the the most powerful motor on it. Yeah. And I think to start with, we will see mostly GT line. Yeah, people just Because generally, whenever a new model comes, everyone goes for biggest and best. Right. What so Will, when the when the news came out, from your perspective of someone you sell them, you educate people on them, uh you are all the time on the different E V forums. People need to look for Badger in Badger in Black, is that right? Um, yes it is. <laughs> you, you spend most of your life educating people about EVs. And if they want to buy one as well, then you know, that's great. But you spend more time actually advising and helping and so from your perspective what were the really big stats uh the big specs to come out of it what did you what were you really pleased to see well, compared to i mean obviously more range is always better range is king but um but compared to the current zoe the biggest difference is that interior because i mean, we all we all love the current zoe but the interior is not what you'd call premium no. on it so to have that that big screen in and to have the nice looking dash and the smart vents and the big digital instrument panel it just looks so much nicer compared to what's been in previous cars even been what's in current ice cars so now you've suddenly got this brilliant small ev that should hopefully be affordable and it's gonna be right up there with the premium brands for interior quality what about oh so i thought the regen was really interesting and you had a sort of a, a surprised look on your face as well craig when he was talking about b mode and d mode oh yeah absolutely but you when they turn around and said we've got the two modes obviously d mode being the standard zoe mode so if you want to use the pedal to do it as you normally do with a zoe and then they say you put it in b mode and it, it will come to nearly a complete stop he said about 10 kilometers an hour which is probably about it's about four or five mile an hour is it's probably in three mile an hour um but i believe as well the regen is adjustable in the b mode as well so you can adjust to how much it actually pulls and slows you down so i think there's three or four settings in that uh will might be able to confirm i don't know as well but i I'm, I'm well, i know pretty what sick. was in your video to be honest yeah that. so, <laughs> so from, from the gist i got was speaking to other people i think the regen is actually adjustable when you're in the b mode as well so it can have it as strong or you can just adjust it how you feel best or you can put, put it back to the zoe mode uh, and drive it like a normal zoe which I've got so used to, believe it or not. How big a deal, in terms of you getting people across the line to buy one, is this dual charging? So fast AC charging, the fastest in the on the market, by the way, and but also fifty kilowatt DC charging. Are people uh, uh, the people that you sell Zoe's to? Are they going to be bothered about that, or are they interested in different things? I, if you want to unlock the Zoe to the people who do do a longer trip who regularly do, whether it be Morecambe to London or up into Scotland or something like that, being able to have a CCS charge at 50 kilowatts is fantastic. Because although they might only do it twice a year, three times a year, if that's twice a year, three times a year where you stop it, where you're having half the stop, that's great. I mean, I do a lot of miles in my EV and I wouldn't want to do it on 22 kilowatt if there was a better option. Yeah. And is it right, um, Craig, the sort of the rumour that they kept 22? Because... They're everywhere in France. Uh, yeah, France is actually riddled with 22 kilowatt posts. Uh, when we went over to Europe in 2017, even then, everywhere you went, every corner of the street, there was a 22 kilowatt post that you could hook up to. And and that's the advantage, as Will was saying, if you're doing a long distance with the 50 and the 22, if you turn up and that, that 50, that CCS is not working, you've still got 22 kilowatts to get you in half an hour to easily go and find another charger. And most other cars are three or seven kilowatts or, you know, 6.9 kilowatts. It's, you've got that option. I mean, you've got the BMW i3, but then the BMW i3, they don't even, don't even supply a three-phase lead with it. So I don't know what that's all about. And that pulls 11 kilowatts. So. I mean, you bet Craig's got a good point there. I mean, I had to stop with my Kona uh, the other week and I was at motorway services and I had to go on AC for half an hour. 
because I needed an extra 20 odd miles to get home and the CCS just wouldn't work. Now, if I'd had 22 kilowatt AC, I could have got in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and and having them two combos, I think is going to be the, the big win. There's a lot of people out there saying it hasn't got adaptive cruise control. And I, I don't think that's a deal breaker whatsoever. I really don't. If you haven't had it for one, you're not going to miss it. Which I haven't. So. But also, this is a. It's you know, in terms of the segments, you know, you could just carry on specking a car until it costs forty grand. Like, like so, where do you yeah. stop? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's got yeah. lane lane control. You know, um, lane assist. It's got lane assist. It's got emergency braking. The lane assist will hold you in the lane. Um, and if you stick cruise control on, it, it's a, it, it, you know. But how far do you want to go without becoming one? Maybe a, a totally lazy driver and not concentrating on the road. In my eyes, it's some safety issue. You know, because it can happen. But or do you want to drive the car and enjoy it? You know, if you if if, if you're that concerned about having like adaptive cruise control and sitting back, then people would be buying Model Threes, won't they, and stuff with it all yeah. in. So now, now, Will, um, you sell you you sell more than just Renaults, so you've got more, uh, you've got more than just one that that model, uh, the cars that you sell. So I'm not asking you to uh, talk up or talk down different models, but there are things coming like the Peugeot E208. There's the uh, Vauxhall slash Opel, depending on where you listen to this show, Corsa E, and other cars as well, the VW ID three, and then some more expensive ones like the Honda E, 125 miles of range, that sucks, and also the what am I forgetting? Oh, the Mini, uh, the Mini E, 120 something miles of range, that sucks. Uh, come on, BMW, you can do better. Um, so, but there is there's competition coming, so Renault had to do something and pull it out of the bag. They do, but I mean, the the actual demand for electric vehicles at the moment, we need all this competition in. We need people to have more of a choice because otherwise you end up in the scenario where people are... are compa- <laughs> you got your, you got your friend joining in. Yes, she has run back into the house. Yeah, Brilliant. you get into a scenario where people are comparing a Zoe to a mod to a Model 3 and saying, why yeah. doesn't it have ad- adaptive cruise control? Well, it doesn't need to have, because in that segment of the market, you don't have adaptive cruise control, a standard. Right, right. Well, right. I mean, she's your, your little friend has picked good timing, because we're at 20 minutes, and yes. we always try and keep the podcast at 20 minutes. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's good timing. Hey, so the Renault Zoe, again, I said it at the beginning of the show, but it's a very important car here in Europe. My US listeners won't won't kind of get it, uh, uh, literally, but also you might not quite understand how important the car is. 150,000 of them sold, but 40,000 of them alone last year. And, you know, over 10, almost 15% of the electric vehicle market in Europe. So a very important, a very important car and just fantastic to, uh, to, to, to have those new specs out. All right, so a million dollar question. As of recording this podcast, we don't know the price. No. No, <laughs> no we don't. <laughs> okay. All I well, can say, it, it, yeah. when I was there, they, they actually turned around and said it was going to be priced within comparable of what it is now in line with that sort of side. But then, obviously, comparing on specs. So if you went for the lowest base model, I'm going to say it's pretty much a, what you're going to buy a standard one for now. Yes. I, d- I don't think the list price for like for like is going to change that much you might find you don't suddenly get the three and a half thousand pound deposit contribution you can get now on it that might be where the change happens but if you're looking on finance for pcp you probably find the residuals are going to have a big step up anyway so i don't think there'll be there's it's obviously going to be more expensive because new cars are but i don't think it's going to be massively more expensive and i think it's going to be cheaper than some of the competition we've seen so far there's one thing to remember for a lot of people out there that don't realise. People say, oh, they're giving the battery lease. You can buy one without the battery lease. Please stop going on about battery lease. If you don't want it, <laughs> buy one without a battery lease. <laughs> I like the battery lease. Personally, yes. I like it. You know, uh, it's the only really expensive thing on the car that can go wrong. And it's not my problem if it does. So uh, there's, there's, there's the, that's the only really expensive thing that can, that can break. So the second million dollar question then is, do we know when it's coming or is that still TBC? Uh, when they're coming or when mine's coming. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, right, here we go. Here, here we go. I heard a nasty uh, rumour that you're getting the first one coming into the country. Well, we're trying an effort to try and get one of them, but uh, I'm, you know, that's a challenge and a half, I think. Neither confirm nor deny that one, yeah. No. I do know at the moment we're hoping to have showroom models and demos around end of October time. I think we see left-hand drivers start appearing first in France, no doubt, which, you, which you'd expect, to be fair. 
<laughs> it's the domestic market, and they sell most of them there. For the Zoe, but I think the right-hand drive ones are going to start being built at the end of August. Because the current oh. Zoe, the last of the current Zoes are being built or are leaving the factory end of July. Really? Okay. Yeah, because so they have a three-week break, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they, they right. shut the factory for a bit in August. Okay, and then when they come back, that makes perfect sense. That's The timing is perfect. They come back and then they've got uh, the new car to be cracking on with. And it's not all new bits. Uh, we should point out, by the way, it's built on the same platform. Exactly so, the same, yeah. It's, it's uh, still the same doors, same rear tailgates, uh, same bumper at the back. Front bumper's different, different bonnet, same wings. There's a few little things, but the interior is the big one, as Will says. It's lovely yeah, interior. So it is technically only a facelift, and as facelift goes, it is a really big change. Normally, the, you see yeah. a change to a light or something like that. <laughs> well, talking and this of, is a really yeah. impressive one. Talking of the lights, I won't be going to Halfords anymore to get a replacement <laughs> yellow bulb or a red bulb for the brakes because <laughs> no. uh, it's all it's all LEDs now. Yeah, and Audi style tracing LEDs as well. Which is... Oh, what? So the, when you do the indicator, it does the yep, fancy... The you know yeah, oh. it <laughs> brilliant all right well look look that's so awesome if people want to find out more will about uh their listing in the uk and now they want one because they've heard this how do they get hold of you what's the website to find out more well we've actually obviously before we knew the name wasn't going to be neo we set up the website zoeneo.co.uk which is a really good moment, url <laughs> yeah if it was called neo it would have been a brilliant url <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, if pe people can put their details in there and then we're setting up a newsletter to keep people up to date with the information as we get it. If uh, people are interested, Craig, in, in the club or the events that you put on, like EVs in the park, how do we find out more details? Yeah, same again. If you just uh, go and search for RZOC on Facebook or rzoc.club main site, follow us on Twitter at RZOC. And if you want to come to EVs in the park, it's uh, www.evitp.co.uk or follow us at EVs in the park on twitter as well so brilliant guys thank you so much thank you well thank you well thank you both very much for coming on the show today and talking about the new renault zoe z50 a very important car along with the nissan leaf here in europe and soon the model 3 as well uh, renault zoe in recent months has been the best selling car in europe uh, leaf i think still holds the record of europe's all-time best selling ev and uh, model 3 catching up very very quickly just the sheer amount of them that people want if you want to get in contact with me and uh, leave me a comment about today's show i'd love to hear from you you can email me hello at ev news daily Dot com. And if you want to leave a message on the other places like Facebook and YouTube, I do check those as well. Well, thank you very much for listening today. 526 previous shows are online for free. If you want to, mostly new shows, but a few interviews in there as well. If you want to get those, I would encourage you to go and have a look at the archive. evnewsdaily.com is the dead simple little WordPress blog that I put everything if you can leave a little review on Apple Podcasts, really, really helps me out. I know you're busy. If you get a chance, though, a little star rating and a review would be utterly amazing. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you soon. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>